The Biden administration is tightening the economic screws on Russian President Vladimir Putin and his billionaire allies known as oligarchs with a new round of sanctions. Authorities in Europe have already seized at least two super yachts, and we do mean super, owned by those extremely wealthy Russian oligarchs. And President Biden is facing pressure of his own to target Russia's oil industry. Ed O'Keefe is at the White House for us. Ed, good morning. Good morning, Tony. Incredible how just over a week after this conflict began, the Biden administration and European countries are now going after some of the world's richest people with close ties to Vladimir Putin. And now one lawmaker saying it may be up to the Russian people themselves to take out Putin. Is there Brutus in Russia? Is there a more successful Colonel Stauffenberg in the <coughs> Russian military? The only way this sh ends, my friend, is for somebody in Russia to take this guy out. South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham not mincing words Thursday night, speaking out about what he thinks it's going to take to stop Russian President Vladimir Putin. Meantime, some of Russia's wealthiest oligarchs and their families are being cut off from the U.S. banking and their assets. Among those on the target list, Vladimir Putin's press secretary, Dmitry Peskov. Alicia Uzmanov, one of Russia's richest men who owns one of the country's largest private jets. And Sergei Kemizov, a friend of Putin's from their KGB days. More than a dozen other oligarchs and their families also face visa restrictions. Our interest is in maintaining the strongest unified economic impact campaign that, uh, uh, on Putin in, in all history. The crisis in Ukraine is causing a spike in gas prices around the world. It's up an average of 22 cents across the nation since just Monday. Still, the White House is under increasing and notably bipartisan pressure to ban imports of Russian oil. I'm all for that. Ban it. Ban the oil. Ban the oil Russia. come from Russia. Yep. Nancy Pelosi is with us, which made me wonder, what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> she's right. The White House says not so fast, noting just 3% of the nation's oil imports come from Russia. We don't have a strategic interest in reducing the global supply of energy. The Biden administration is also addressing the growing refugee crisis, announcing some 75,000 Ukrainians in the U.S. as of Tuesday can now stay an additional 18 months. Now this morning, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Europe meeting with NATO allies to keep the diplomacy going. And later today, Finland's president is coming here to the White House to meet with President Biden. You might think, why is that important? Well, Finland historically has stayed out of NATO and tried to remain neutral across Europe, not to upset its next door neighbor, Russia. But a poll in Finland this week found now a majority of people there believe the country should join that military alliance. Just a sign, Gail, of how alliances and politics across Europe have been transformed as this conflict begins. Yeah, thank you, Ed, for putting that in perspective. That's why it's important.